hello students today we will learn that what is binary vapor cycle okay so before understanding binary vapor cycle we have to understand a concept of an engine which i am showing over here this is an special type of arrangement of engine what it is i am going to tell you suppose there are two heat engines this is engine 1 e1 and this is engine 2 e2 okay we know this thing that definition of heat engine is that it absorbs some amount of heat from high temperature reservoir this is the amount of heat which is input to this engine and it rejects some amount of heat okay over here we can see that q1 is the heat addition to this first engine and q2 is the heat rejection we know this thing that there is no heat engine possible in which there is no heat rejection okay so heat rejection has to be there and q1 is the heat addition and q2 is the heat rejection and this second heat engine is of such kind that it is working on the rejected heat of this first engine okay so q1 is the heat addition to this first engine and q2 is the rejection and the difference that is q1 minus q2 is what the work done by this engine that is heat engine okay and this heat engine the second heat engine is absorbing heat q2 and rejecting heat q3 and q2 minus q3 is the work done del w2 you can see so del w1 is the work done obtained by engine 1 and del w2 is the work done obtained by engine 2 since engine always operates in form of thermodynamic cycle so this engine is stopping cycle because from here heat is rejected and this engine is working or rejected heat of this first engine so this is the topping cycle heat engine this is the bottoming cycle heat engine this is delivering del w1 amount of work and this engine is delivering del w2 amount of work okay now we know this thing that efficiency of heat engine suppose i am talking about this first engine e1 the efficiency of this heat engine would be nita1 equals to 1 minus q2 by q1 i am not here elaborating about the entire theory of heat engine because i believe this thing that all of you are knowing that what that heat engine just i am refreshing you all in regards of the efficiency of the engine so the efficiency of this first engine that is the topping cycle nita1 equals to 1 minus q2 by q1 okay now in case i want q1 in terms of efficiency and q2 then this equation can be rearranged q1 becomes equals to q2 upon 1 minus nita1 now in case i talk about the efficiency of this second engine then it would be nita2 equals to 1 minus q3 by q2 according to definition of heat engine so in case i want q3 in terms of nita2 and q2 then it would come out like this q3 equals to q2 into 1 minus nita2 now in case these two heat engines i am considering as a single system okay means e1 and e2 okay taking this these two engines in a single system then all in all both are providing total work done of del w1 plus del w2 this is the total work done and all in all q1 is the heat addition to the system and q3 is, is a rejection because in case i am taking these two heat engines as a single system and q2 is what rejected by this first engine is absorbed by second so to this system taking these two heat engines as a single system q1 is the heat addition and q3 is a rejection therefore the efficiency of this overall the combination of the two engine the efficiency overall efficiency would be 1 minus q3 upon q1 according to the definition of efficiency of heat engine so this is the overall efficiency now in case i am putting the value of q3 from this equation over here in this overall efficiency expression and value of q1 from this equation okay in this overall efficiency expression ultimately i am getting overall efficiency in terms of efficiency of heat engine 1 and efficiency of heat engine 2 so efficiency of heat engine 1 and efficiency of heat engine 2 so nita o equals to 1 minus bracket 1 minus nita 1 into 1 minus nita 2 you can put this value of q3 and q1 and you will find this final expression now suppose this first engine the topping cycle engine has efficiency of 40% 0.40 and the second engine the bottoming cycle engine has individual efficiency of 50% 0.50 in case i am putting these two values numerical values in this overall efficiency expression ultimately what i am getting you can put this i am directly writing over here after calculation the overall efficiency is 70% okay so individually the engines are having 
lower efficiency, but the combined efficiency of the engine is greater, 70%. This is what the concept of binary vapor cycle. Now, what binary vapor cycle is? Now, you can see over here that there are two Rankine cycles. I believe that you know what is Rankine cycle and how it is demonstrated on TS diagram. This is the prerequisite of this lecture. So, two Rankine cycles. This is the topping vapor water cycle or topping Rankine cycle. Okay. In which the working fluid is mercury. Generally, in Rankine cycle, the working fluid is water. Suppose the working fluid is mercury. So, at point 4, mercury is entering in the boiler and ultimately coming out in superheated form at point 1 okay and then expanding in the turbine up to point 2 and between 2 and 3 point 2 and 3 mercury is losing heat the beauty of mer using mercury in vapor oil cycle is that condensing temperature of mercury is generally very high compared to that of condensing temperature of water for same pressure in case we talk about then condensing pressure of mercury is higher than condensing temperature of water okay for same condensing temperature i am talking about okay so suppose mercury is losing heat at temperature t3 i am taking a numerical value suppose it is 350 degree centigrade okay so mercury is losing heat between points 2 and 3 and for an example it is losing heat at 350 degree centigrade now this is the bottoming vapor water cycle or bottoming Rankine cycle in which the working fluid is water okay so water is entering inside the boiler at point 8 and ultimately coming out in superheated form at point 5 then expanding in the turbine up to point 6 and then condensing between point 6 and 7 since this boiler okay requires heat and mercury is losing heat at higher temperature so that rejected heat can be utilized to heat up the water and convert it into superheated steam so the heat rejected by this topping vapor water cycle, topping Rankine cycle in which the working fluid is mercury is utilized to convert liquid water from point 8 into superheated steam which is coming out at point 5 like this and work done is obtained between point 5 and 6 by this bottoming vapor water cycle and work done is obtained by this topping vapor water cycle between point 1 and 2. Okay. Now, this is binary vapor cycle. One vapor cycles rejected heat is utilized to boil the liquid of another vapor water cycle. And Q3 is the heat rejection by this bottoming vapor water cycle to the atmosphere. Okay. Now the concept remains the same as like I have told in this theory. So the overall efficiency would be what? Efficiency of this stopping cycle is suppose Nita 1. Efficiency of this bottoming cycle is Nita 2. So, the overall efficiency of this combined system would be Nita O equals to 1 minus 1 minus Nita 1 bracket into 1 minus Nita 2. So, again, intuitively, the efficiency of Rankine cycle is on an average more or less 40 to 45 percent. But in case we are taking this combined system, then the efficiency can touch this much level. Over here, I have took an example. Suppose I say this mercury cycle has efficiency 40% and this water cycle has efficiency 50%. Okay. In case you are putting in this overall efficiency expression, you will get efficiency 70%. So this is what the beauty of binary vapor cycle and the theory of binary vapor cycle. So hope you would have understood the concept, the thermodynamic concept of binary vapor cycle and what is the merit with the binary vapor cycle. Thank you.